Okay, so we are online and uh, thank you everybody to be here again. This is uh, our last webinar for this season, for season 2023-2024 on the International Legume Society webinars. I'm happy to be here for this last uh, episode with um, uh, Jose Carlos Jimenez Lopez which is a colleague from CSIC uh, that is, uh, um, in particular, he works at the Zaidin Institute, especially at the Spanish National Research Council in Zaidin, close to Granada. Mm -hmm. uh, Carlos has worked on, lupin, on lupins for at least 14 years, 15 years, as far as I understand. He started in mm -hmm. Perth in Australia and has worked uh, mainly on physiological aspect, on allergies uh, at molecular level at least. Uh, but uh, for today, we are focusing on nutraceutical and in particular nutraceutical in lupin seeds. So please, Jose, the audience is yours. Okay, thank you very much, Nelson, for the introduction. And thank you very much to, uh, to the seminar organizer for the invitation to talk about part of the work we are currently developing. This work is mostly related to molecular nutraceutic of looping uh, seed protein and their health benefit. So <clears throat> we are currently working with different looping species from the sweet looping group, but the result I'm going to present uh, today uh, are mostly related to narrow left looping. So from more than 300 annual and perennial uh, species of looping, the sweet looping group is integrated uh, by four species mainly. is the blue, the white, the pearl, and the yellow looping. Uh, why, uh, why this group is um, integrated by, by these four uh, main species? Because they can use be used for human food uh, and uh, very important, they have very low quantity of alkaloid, alkaloid uh, substance that they are really toxic for humans. So, uh, looping crops are particularly uh, species, uh, the particular species of, of the uh, sweet looping group are geographically distributed, but not equally uh, cultivated and produced. So, Considering a uh, global production, narrow left looping is cultivated mainly in Australia for about is the, uh, is uh, about 78% uh, of the global cultivation, the global looping uh, cultivated in the in the earth. Uh, then uh, this cultivation is uh, about in the Perth area and in the sur and east area, the blue the blue areas in the in the map. So in Europe. The main species cultivated is the uh, albus, uh, Lupinus albus, um, by 70%. Um, uh, the cultivation is about the 17% and the production. Who are the main producers? But they are Germany, for example, they are Poland. Uh, in Spain, is uh, is an average uh, production. Uh, Lupinus luteus is produced mainly in the Med Mediterranean region, is uh, about 1% uh, of the global production, and uh, Lupinus mutabilis or per uh, lupin is about 4% of the uh, cultivation, global cultivation, and they require a special, uh, a special condition, uh, that's why they are cultivated in Ecuador, Peru, Bolivia, Chile, etc. Um, well, <clears throat> uh, for our research in nutraceutical property, we have chosen lupin as a model of study, uh, study among other protagonist uh, plant crop and um, among other different crops. So we are interested in lupin species, particularly narrow the lupin, because uh, first because I start part of this study in a uh, few years ago, and I have discovered through all this year, many possibilities and benefits that this species have from different point of view. So, uh, looping, these reasons are that looping are ornamental plants, they have aesthetic value. They are also important for uh, important uh, ecological engineer. They are uh, able to colonize extremely improvised uh, soil. 
they have many agricultural uh, benefit like they can they are able to fix uh, agric uh, atmospheric nitrogen in symbiosis with bacteria they have benefit following the rotation with the uh, with looping for example for cereal uh, they promote soil uh, oxygenation thanks to the root system, increasing the chain of the uh, other other crop survival. They are they are taking very efficiently uh, phosphorus from soil. They improve soil health so, uh, through diminishing the use of chemical. They prevent weed uh, growing, particularly particularly because their adaptation uh, to poor among acidic soil. And also, uh, they have more and more um, benefit, like uh, in narrow left looping, for example, they are uh, able to uh, have defense and um, protection against uh, pathogens. Looping have value as I call superfood to fight the uh, diseases. Diseases. Uh, we are talking. We were talking about a little bit later about <clears throat> this uh, this kind of uh, benefit. So. Um, <clears throat> If we uh, we talk about benefits uh, for agriculture, I wanted to show some results on plant defense against uh, pathogen. It is uh, not the specific subject for this uh, uh, seminar, but I think it's uh, for me it's important to show this uh, result. For example, uh, they are able to fight uh, pathogen. How they fight this pathogen? But, um, uh, some of the seed protein called uh, beta conglutin, that is the, the, <clears throat> the main uh, subject, the main topic for this uh, seminar, they are able uh, to um, prevent the growth or suppress the growth of fungal uh, pathogen by suppress, uh, suppressing the ephal growth and elongation. They are able to enhance plant tissue resistance to necrosis produced by uh, fungal or uh, necrotrophic pathogen. They have the potential to be used in agriculture uh, as a pathogen resistant. And this protein also, uh, this uh, capacity is also good to prevent substantial annual crop losses. So for example, in the, in the picture, we can see um, some in vivo, uh, in vivo aside, where uh, beta conglutin is expressed in one part of the leaf, the one, uh, the necrosis of the pathogen doesn't progress. Also, we can see in the low part of the, of the um, slide that um, these protein are able to prevent the IFA, uh, the if, uh, fungal IFA um, progression. So uh, what I say is very important, this, uh, this kind of uh, agricultural benefit. Particularly, so uh, as I mentioned, I, I'm going to focus the seminar in about the narrow left lupin uh, beta conglutin. They are multifunctional protein uh, with important role in agriculture, but also they are very important for human nutrition and health. <clears throat> so uh, why, why lupins? Uh, so beta, beta, conglutin, beta conglutin, another protein that uh, integrate the seed of lupin, are responsible of nutritional quality and nutraceutical quality of the lupin seed. Uh, for example, oi. so we can go through the um, nutri nutritional property of a seed protein, lupin seed protein, and the main message we have to take is they are a fundamental source of protein, uh, use it for human food. For example, they are, they have an average of 40, between 40 and 52 percent of um, quantity of protein, depending on the species, of the four species of the sweet lupin group. They, uh, they have very low amount of alkaloid. They have also very low amount of lipid and oligosaccharides that are, uh, that from that promote the, glyce the glycemic index in the body. Uh, if we compare the, uh, the properties, the nutritional property of uh, lupin with other uh, legumes, we can see that they have the uh, same amount of protein that, for example, soybean, but they have lower amount of fat, uh, starch, and all these kind of sugars. They are not good for the for the body and and have high uh, high quantity in fiber. If we if we compare with other cereal and grain, we can see that the lupin uh, lupin have more amount of protein compared with the other with quinoa, with spelti, etc. They have very low amount of starch and high in fiber. 
So we can also talk about um, the nutritional and nutraceutical properties of uh, lupin seed. They have good amount of magnesium, zinc, iron to combat um, uh, muscle fatigue, good for immune system, good for the brain. They have antioxidant capacity. They have probiotic um, benefit uh, to grow the um, beneficial bacteria for, for a better intestine and health. They have large quantity of fiber to help prevent energy spike and dips, um, help to reduce uh, blood pressure and risk the, the cardiovascular diseases. They have um, uh, this fiber content uh, is good also for to prevent increased calori cal caloric intake in the diet, the re regulation of the, the body weight, and also they are free in gluten. I think we uh, all know that the, this property. They, are, they have benefit for uh, hypertension. They have low, uh, they are low in sugar, the sugar that the fast release in the body. So the, glyce the glycemic index in the body can, uh, can be controlled. They regulate, regulate the blood, the um, sugar, uh, the sugar in the blood, the balance. So improve di diabetes, cardiovascular diseases, diseases etc. They are low in lipids, so we can control the, the, or decrease the cholesterol and triacylglyceridots. And they, are, they have very uh, low among phytosteroids, and they are very low containing alkaloid. Already we know. But again, this, the main message in this, uh, for these uh, lupin seeds compound is that, that lupin is a fundamental source of protein. Well, um, narrowless looping uh, is a multifunctional uh, protein uh, model of a study for us. So they are seed store protein. Uh, as seed store protein, they are classified as a, one of the main families that is globally solu soluble in, in dilute salt solution. Particularly, they belong to the 7S type uh, mm, mm, uh, glycine. So they are also, uh, they are called conglutin or they are called bicilin. Uh, uh, is the same. They are proteins synthesized in, and accumulate in, in seed storage tissue, that is uh, cotyledon, because uh, the, mm, the lupin seed doesn't have the storage tissue uh, called endosperm. So uh, during the development and maturation, they, uh, this protein has stored in a specialized uh, com uh, compartment. They are protein bodies. You can see in the picture these protein bodies. They serve mainly, uh, they are uh, mobili mobilized uh, during seed germination because they serve as a nitrogen, carbon, and sulfur source for the developing embryo and plant growth during, during germination. But they have more and more, uh, more function and more benefits uh, are coming uh, nowadays. So they are fighting against pathogens, uh, as uh, I already mentioned. They have antioxidant, they are antioxidant protein. They fight against inflammation based diseases like um, they are anti type 2 diabetes, anti cancer, that I'm going through uh, the seminar to this uh, subject. So, um, this beta, this beta conglutin are, um, as I say, bicilin protein. We identify this uh, protein uh, during uh, during the, the development of a lupin genome project in, in Perth, in Western Australia. We were able to identify up to uh, four families, alpha, beta, gamma, and delta. <clears throat> and we identify beta as the most abundant protein in the seed with 56% of the of the total protein, followed by alpha, gamma, and uh, uh, delta and gamma. So the structure of the bicilin uh, protein or the beta conglutin protein have two domains. Uh, a globular domain is uh, uh, integrated by two anti antiparallel beta barrels, and uh, a distinctive feature that is uh, another domain uh, called mobile arm that is linked to this uh, to this um, globular domain so this is this is the um, this is the sequence uh, the comparison of the sequence of the seven of the seven uh, conglutin that we have uh, we have identified uh, you can see highlighting red the 
mobile are uh, part of the protein and the globular uh, domain is uh, without uh, color. These pita um, we have checked that uh, they are the most variable family of conglutin among the four family of conglutin. They have uh, high polymorphism, relative high polymorphism, particularly in the particularly in the mobile arm, um, um, domain. Uh, maybe this confers the multifunctionality of this uh, of this protein. So uh, this is uh, I can show here the um, seven beta conglutin that we have identified, and this is the structure mostly. The globular domain, as you can see, the globular domain are quite similar, uh, and the um, prediction of the mobile arm is a little bit different compared one to uh, one another. But uh, but uh, I mean the 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 the, the mobile arm is uh, already integrated, but the same number of alpha helix structure. If we compare the beta conglutin from looping to another uh, type of legume, for example, with peanut, with uh, soybean, uh, with lentil, with chickpea, with pea, we can see that the structure of the global domain is quite similar. Even the sequence is not uh, quite the same, the structure, the general structure is the same. But in all the other uh, legume, this mobile arm is absent. Is uh, as I say, is a distinctive feature feature of uh, of this uh, looping conglutin protein, beta conglutin protein. That is, uh, as far as I know, it's is already uh, absent in the in the rest of the of the protein of the similar bacillin protein. There is only one protein from Faseolus vulgaris that is a fase, uh, is called uh, Faseolin that have very very small uh, mobile arm, but not comparable comparable with this with this mobile arm. So um, after all this introduction, I'm going to talk about the molecular neutrophilic of the narrowness looping, uh, particularly uh, molecular neutrophilic. So what what mean molecular neutrophilic? Molecular neutrophilic property as are uh, health benefits. So for human, is is uh, among I mean is more than just the nutritional uh, benefit uh, having uh, carbohydrate, lipid, protein, oligo element chemical, etc. And the health benefits are translated into the legume as a functional food. So meaning that they pro, uh, promote, just as a natural process uh, food, promote health benefit beyond nutrition. This is the most important, beyond nutrition. And help to effective prevention and treatment of different diseases. So um, molecular nutrition, um, uh, as I explained, what is nutrition? Molecular nutrition is uh, already the direct relationship between, uh, I mean, cause effect, cause effect between one component and one or more uh, by activity. So this is the, the difference between uh, molecular nutraceutical and nutraceutical. <clears throat> okay, um, so. Many studies um, agree that stress is uh, the main cause on, on an effect of many health problems that people in the society nowadays have, and is in a cumulative uh, sustaining manner. So, uh, sustained stress is the cause uh, the cause of many diseases uh, we can see here: cardiovascular disease, Alzheimer, asthma, uh, autoimmune, uh, pulmonary disease, but Two of the most incident in the population and more important are diabetes and diabetes and cancer. Wait, uh, sorry, diabetes and cancer. So, with this, um, with these studies, uh, with the sustained stress, these stress make diseases, make inflammation, make diseases, make more stress, and this this situation enhance every day for uh, for the people and we propose a um, looping looping protein as the um, looping protein as um, to break this, uh, this cycle uh, of uh, of vicious cycle in the in the um, in the society nowadays so 
Uh, previous studies about, um, for example, concerning the diabetes, concerning hyperglucemia, um, many studies have used um, whole strat, uh, uh, lupin floor, can, etc., to know what are the properties, the nutraceutical benefit, uh, but they, they found a significant decrease of pro, uh, prosprandial level of uh, glucose and insulin. They, are, uh, they have shown already the uh, decrease the glycemic response uh, in animal experimental, in experimental animal uh, also have found that, that uh, they are able to uh, decrease the fasting uh, glycemic and insulin uh, in the blood concentration, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. So for cancer, uh, there are many. There are only few uh, few studies in cancer in the literature uh, today, and I think there are these three uh, already paper published and one one and another coming from our group. So uh, for prevention of cancer, for example, they have focused mostly in colorectal cancer, and they have seen that. Um, Mm, loopings, but not a uh, particular protein, but mm, they have used uh, a whole extract of uh, protein to see that they are able to prevent the colorectal cancer progression and all the effects that they have. Uh, so, uh, as I said, there, there is very few uh, amount of paper and very limited uh, information. Well, uh, for looping, having studied this lipid hypertension, the effect in hypertension, effect in, in allergies, etc. But as I say, mostly they have used uh, they have used uh, whole extract, and we don't know except for one protein, gamma conglutin, in the last uh, few years. Uh, we don't know exactly which component of the lupin seed are um, the main responsible for the nutritional uh, benefit. So. Um, um, we are working in, our, in beta conglutin to tackle the uh, diabetes so the modulation on insulin signaling pathway. So this is a complicated um, slide, but I can I can summarize in in few in few sentences. So the progression of uh, insulin resistance in type two diabetes have a mechanism uh, that is uh, mediated by uh, mediated by the immune system cells and uh, the fat tissue cells in the body. So if we have a daily, a daily food intake in high-rich uh, high um, food uh, containing uh, a lot of uh, carbohydrate, uh, a lot of lipid, we have a sedentary lifestyle, we are, uh, we are going to, uh, to uh, we, are we are facilitating the body uh, uh, inflammatory uh, situation uh, and a stress situation for the body that I say is initiated by the immune system by releasing many uh, many mediators, many uh, pro-inflammatory mediators, cytokine, chemo, chemokine, and, 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 and increasing the stress so, uh, so uh, a species, a reactive species of, uh, of uh, oxygen. So uh, as this uh, stress progress, the inflammatory progress, the, the response of the immune system is enhanced uh, every, every day more, every time more and more, and the, uh, the fat tissue is able to recruit this um, immune, immune cell um, to the fat tissue to uh, generate and to, to generate more inflammatory response and more um, uh, and enhance most the stress response. So how the diabetes progress, but in a healthy individu individual, insulin secretion and normal uh, glucose disposal is uh, taking place in, in, the, in the body. So in the muscle and in the adipose tissue. In the pre-diabetes um, state, uh, there is a genetic disposition of even with overnutrition, physiological, uh, physical inactivity, uh, the response to insulin mediate glucose uptake um, is not working, is not working, and there is a compensation for this, uh, this not working situation with the secretion of more and more insulin. So in a type 2 diabetes situation, the insulin secretion is not longer compensated 
for the increase of peripheral um, insulin demand. So uh, there is what is called insulin resistance. It's a defective insulin secretion and response. I mean, uh, the body increase and continue producing more and more insulin, but the cell are not responding to this insulin. This is the, this is the situation. So at molecular level, what, how, how the insulin molecules in all pathways work? So now we are, uh, we are, uh, we have created the inflammatory response. But how this inflammatory response, uh, response um, is is uh, taking is taking the insulin signal pathway or is uh, interfering with that? So if we have the cell, the insulin is uh, in the insulin receptor is activating the, the insulin receptor, and then a signal pathway cascade. Uh, many protein uh, below are activate and are synthesized to activate um, in one side the um, translocation of glucose transport to the cell, to the membrane of the cell to get the intake to, uh, to uptake uh, glucose to the to inside of the cell to be used as, as an energy. And also is promoting the gluconeogenesis, the synthesis of glucose. Well, the most important thing with the with this um, inflammatory um, state is that this protein uh, at the same that this, this protein every time have to be, be increasing the amount of protein to respond to the insulin uh, and uh, the uptake of glucose. But uh, there is a moment that this um, inflammatory state and this stress, uh, there is a moment in the cell that already uh, the situation of the, the synthesis of this protein shut down completely and the, the level of, the, of this um, signaling pathway protein uh, are really low or disappear, dis, disappear this, uh, this um, synthesis. This protein has, for example, uh, IRS1, uh, PIE3, uh, AKT, all this protein that I have shown here, um, the glucose uh, transporter, etc. So here in the low part, we can have we, uh, we, uh, we can see the, this stress of signal uh, inflammatory of inflammatory state that shut down with this in signal shut down all this uh, signal in pathway. So uh, the molecular mechanism uh, of this uh, insulin resistance situation uh, goes through um, um, all the situation, the molecular situation, I have explained, but we want to know uh, if beta conglutide promote the anti-inflammatory effect. We want to know if narrow, narrow left looping uh, are potential insulin-like active principle and promoting rest restoration of uh, insulin signaling pathway by the potentiation of a feedback mechanism, uh, mechanism uh, for uh, pancreatic cells and also helping to restore, to restore the balance between insulin secretion and per peripheral glucose uptake. So, okay. So the objective we have for, the, for our study is to know at the at first, with compound, with protein uh, in, the, in the seed uh, are providing the health benefit. For that, we we just yes, uh, we want we did uh, in uh, we obtain the individual narrow left looping beta conglutin because uh, remember we are working in molecular nutraceutic one compound one bioactivity or more than one and to investig investigate the potential use of uh, beta conglutin another protein is a form to fight inflammatory based diseases like uh, type 2 diabetes and cancer, uh, colorectal and breast cancer. So, so I will go very quickly uh, through the methodology we follow uh, because we don't have a lot of time right now. So uh, the methodology um, is about, we first identify new gene and protein from the a species of C we are working by tractectomic approach or proteomic approach. Then we make by informatic analysis uh, structure at the structural level and functional level. And then we obtain the protein from natural or recombinant sources uh, through biochemical methods. When we have the protein, when we have the study of the structure, etc., we uh, perform some analysis at molecular level. So 
to know the mechanism of interaction with another intestine protein. We uh, we have also we do uh, a study at in vitro uh, with in vitro and ex vivo assay to uh, then uh, know what are the pleiotropic effects at molecular level of this uh, congruent protein uh, from from the species we are we are working. So. Um, the recombinant protein we we have used uh, until now recombinant protein we we made also uh, some uh, experiment with the whole um, extract of the seed to 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 see uh, at first see if the the species uh, the species that narrow left looping in this case was working in this health benefit so uh, i think we already know how to produce a recombinant protein after the expression of the protein in culture in cell culture and uh, separate this protein purify, uh, purify this protein by affinity chromatography dialysis concentration and refolding of the protein if uh, necessary so um, the acid we, we do is uh, in vitro, uh, using in vitro and ex uh, vivo methods. We use uh, model cells like pancreatic um, uh, liver uh, cell. Uh, we make control. Um, we may, we may we may control cell uh, for this aside. We induce inflammation and also we uh, have a model of insulin resistance for uh, this uh, aside and then we check pro-inflammatory mediator we check uh, uh, what's happened with the insulin molecular signal well protein and also we have another system that is ex vivo system that we use uh, blood from serum from uh, people who, who are already diabetic diabetic uh, so we check uh, carbon the um, what is the uh, oxidative stress of the of the cell by checking the carbonylation analysis, uh, the enzymatic analysis, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. So we also uh, have um, two methods to, to see uh, what are the what are the um, the interaction, what are the protein of um, particular um, interesting um, molecule interacting with beta conglutin. So uh, I'm going to summarize the main result right now of all this uh, going through all this uh, methodology. So we have demonstrated that the beta conglutin uh, are able to interact with insulin, with recombinant human insulin by uh, co-immunoprecipitation uh, co uh, aside uh, with surface platinum resonance. So we have seen that beta 1, beta 3, and beta C are the main interactor with insulin. So uh, we can say that beta conglutin are potential insulin like active principle. Um, so the molecular basis we found, we discovered for the anti inflammatory effect of beta conglutin, go through the, that the beta conglutin are able to decrease the pro inflammatory cytokine levels. Uh, they are able to regulate, down-regulate the gene expression level of many pro-inflammatory uh, genes like uh, interleukin, uh, in nitric oxy, uh, synthase. They are uh, beta conglutin are able to decrease the inflammatory mediator, the production of nitric oxid, that is another uh, inflammatory um, um, uh, molecule, TNF, uh, uh, ENF uh, gamma, and many other. They, regu they regulate the chemiotaxy of the cell adhesion, uh, meaning that uh, beta conglutin are able to decrease this molecule here that are responsible to, um, to, uh, for the adhesion and chemiotaxy to the fat tissue uh, of the immune system. So uh, remember that we, it's necessary for the for the, the instauration of the inflammatory state uh, that many uh, immune system uh, travel to the fat tissue. They regulate the expression level of inflammatory marker in the disease uh, diabetes axis. All the protein I have. Uh, I have talked about um, before um, in the in the signaling pathway of the of the um, insulin. Uh, <clears throat> so, with this result, we have demonstrated that um, the 
beta conglutide are anti-inflammatory molecules. But they are not only able to um, decrease inflammation, but also uh, they are able to reverse back the insulin resistant in pan pancreatic cell model. So we have a model, we induce a resistance in the pancreatic cell, um, cells and with beta conglutin have through many pleiotrophic and pleiotropic effect, they are, uh, they are able to uh, recover the healthy, healthy uh, cells in, the, in, this, uh, in this pancreatic model. How, how is possible to do that? How, uh, how uh, beta conglutin are able to do all this uh, kind, all this uh, effect? So we we have seen that the molecular mechanism or the molecular basis for anti-diabetic effect of beta conglutin uh, have many uh, many effects. They are able to uh, decrease the pro inflammatory factors as uh, nitricous synthase uh, gene expression, they are able to uh, decrease the pro-inflammatory mediator, they are able to increase uh, the, um, all the protein in the insulin signaling pathway, they are able to balance the metabolic uh, homeostasis for other uh, metabolic routes, uh, they, they inhibit the, the attraction to the fat tissue uh, um, um, of the uh, immune system, immune cell system, because they decrease the many chemiotactic molecules in the surface of the of uh, of the immune system. So they are in their uh, beta conglutin are also able to uh, increase the uptake of glucose. They, they not only produce uh, induce the production the production of more uh, protein in the insulin synaptic pathway, but also they they are able to activate this protein by phosphorylation, and they also uh, restore the oxy oxidative stress in the cell by increasing the glutathione production, decreasing the protein carbonylation, and they. Uh, so there are many, many, many molecular uh, basic molecular uh, development in, in the cell to uh, to produce or to revert this insulin um, resistance resistance in the cell. So we can say that already beta conglutin are multifunctional protein. They exhibit many agricultural but also health benefit. They they are anti-inflammatory protein. They are anti-diabetic protein. They are they are they anti-cancer protein. I can advance that they are they are they are uh, anti-cancer protein um, um, because uh, we have made uh, some uh, some progress in this uh, in this uh, research uh, about breast and colorectal can colorectal cancer. Uh, they have uh, they, uh, we have many promising uh, promising results uh, that but. I'm not going to talk about much in this uh, in this seminar about that because we don't have uh, much time. I'm going through uh, um, uh, to know what are the main and di distinctive structural features of beta conglutin responsible for the nutritional nutraceutical properties. So. Um, we have to we have to make the question what is unique about the structure of the beta uh, beta conglutin. I already advanced uh, along the seminar what are, what is the unique in the structure. As you might know already, the unique things in the in the protein in the structure of protein beta conglutin are the mobile arm. They are not in other protein of the same family in any other legume. At least I haven't uh, found this uh, this uh, mobile arm in in other protein of the same family of the same family. So uh, what we did is um, we developed acid with the whole protein, and also we we made um, we made truncate form of uh, beta conglutins. We made to get for, for, for all the protein, I mean, from beta 1, 3, 6, 5, and 7, that 5 and 7 are the beta conglutin remaining, was remaining to investigate the anti inflammatory also uh, and anti diabetic property because we are ta start uh, the investigation, the research only with beta 1, 3, and 6, and beta 4 and beta 2, uh, with the result that I, I think I mentioned, beta 
two and four doesn't have, they don't have the anti-inflammatory and anti-diabetic effect. So here is the Western blood um, image. Uh, the, the beta conglutin, the whole protein, have about 75 mm, kilodalton, and the recombin and the truncate form uh, have, without the uh, mobile band arm, ha, uh, have 50, about 50 kilodalton. So remember which, which part of the protein is the mobile arm, is the N terminal, is here, is the most uh, polymorphic um, part of the protein. Uh, if we compare the seven, uh, the seven uh, isoform from narrow left loop. So <clears throat> we follow a similar methodology. I mean, we, we obtain the whole protein, the truncate protein. Uh, we, we did uh, in vivo and ex vivo acid with different model, pancreatic and liver model of cell. We also have a model from diabetic, uh, diabetic people. So to check uh, all the inflammatory marker or the uh, insulin signal pathway marker, we did uh, enzymatic acid, we did carbonylation acid, in, uh, immunoblotting marker, etc. We did all the work we, uh, I present previously, we did with this protein with the whole and the truncate protein. So uh, I can say already that um, with this in vitro ex vivo acid, uh, this protein, the truncate protein, are not able to have the effect that the, the whole protein has. So they, they don't reduce, the, uh, they don't have a reduced effect in inflammation. They, they are not able to shut down the production of uh, these uh, different uh, cytokine and pro-inflammatory mediator. They are not able, they are not able to, uh, mm, to ameliorate the uh, oxidative, oxidative stress in the, in the cell. Well, I have uh, some results here. You, you can see a few examples, for example, by PCR or ELISA, how the truncate form are not able to decrease the uh, expression level of uh, pro-inflammatory mediator uh, by the gene expression of the protein synthesis, synthesis. They are not able to recover the oxidative stress um, in, the, in the cell treat. Uh, with this inflammatory um, with uh, uh, inflammatory molecule, they are not able to uh, reduce the expression of pro-inflammatory other pro-inflammatory molecule like uh, nitric oxygen uh, that was already demonstrated that mediate the inflammation in type two di diabetes, and uh, well. Uh, we can say already that the uh, conglutin protein beta-5 and beta-7 inhibit the uh, genetic expression of different cytokine and uh, pro-inflammatory mediator and secretion, of, uh, and secretion and production of this inflammatory mediator. Uh, Beta-conglutin uh, 5 and 7 regulate the oxidative balance and they are already uh, anti-diabetic protein, but uh, the truncate form, as I say, as I mentioned, beta of beta conglutin um, five and seven at the beginning, and we check also the other isoform of beta conglutin. They they are unable to promote the anti-inflammatory and, and anti-diabetes uh, effect. So um, to conclude this part of the of the seminar, I can say that beta five and beta seven. Um, mobile arm is a key uh, uh, relevant, is of key relevant and is involved in the nutraceutical properties of beta conglutin. So I want to uh, acknowledge uh, many institutions, different institutions where I work in. I have been working for a long time and people they work in this, uh, in this uh, institution from the from University of uh, Granada and also from the um, University Hospital uh, in Granada, the uh, Institute Carlos III of Health. And also, um, for me, very important to acknowledge uh, CSIRO and the University of Western Australia, particularly to Karan Singh and Kalambol Siddiq, uh, uh, where I was working at the beginning of this project and the funding I, I had. So, 
beta con gluten exhibit, exhibit and the agriculture and health benefit. They are anti-inflammatory proper, they are anti-diabetic proper. And I have shown you already what is, what is the structure of the involved mainly in this uh, in this multifunctional um, uh, protein. So they are anti-cancer protein. Yes, uh, as I as advised before, they are anti-cancer protein, but uh, I have no time to, to go through this uh, subject. Maybe it's uh, the subject for the next season, uh, next season uh, seminar uh, that I propose is uh, for this uh, seminar season. Uh, Julia Scudero Feliu is um, my PhD student and also is my uh, is a postdoctoral research working in my lab right now. Uh, she's now traveling to uh, the University of Durham uh, in North Carolina, US, for the, to attend the new uh, phytologist next generation scientist. So she was awarded by by um, by. Uh, scholarship to, to attend this uh, this um, seminar this uh, congress by mythology so this is the flash poster uh, she's going to present i'm not going through this uh, all this information but i say is uh, i maybe it's interesting for the next season of the of the seminar uh, so i'm going to read just the conclusion to say that beta con gluten protein act, act as a natural uh, cytotoxic ad, uh, agent for uh, breast cancer, but also for colorectal cancer lines by reducing the viability, increasing the caspase independent apoptosis and decreasing the cell renew capacity of the cancer stem cells by influencing cancer resistance and uh, metastasis. So this is the work we are doing right now uh, in cancer and the progression of um, cancer uh, related with the uh, narrowness looping, beta con gluten. We are uh, we are proving some um, in vivo. Uh, we are checking if the uh, they are not only affecting in vitro and ex vivo, but also in vivo in, in experimental animal. We are um, elucid we are elucidating some other mechanisms. Um, of beta con gluten. Uh, we have already a, a patent uh, in, um, in evaluation because what I haven't uh, said is that these proteins are cytotoxic for cancer cells, but also they promote the sensibilization of cancer cells to uh, radiation, as say to radiotherapy. So uh, imagine if you have to give one ten of the doses of uh, radiation to a, pa a patient if he has already uh, the congruting in the in the cell system. So it's, it's amazing. So thank you a lot for your attention and uh, any question will be welcome. Thank you very much. Thank you, Jose, for the nice presentation. It was very interesting, also quite refreshing because it's a new topic uh, for compared to our previous webinars. Mm -hmm. Now, if uh, there's any questions from our audience, uh, I see that somebody's writing in the chat. Uh, let me see. Ah, oh, Tom. Uh, Tom raised his hand. So please. Mm -hmm. Uh, thank you so much, uh, Jose Carlos. Very interesting uh, to hear all, all of the research you've been doing. One question came to my mind is, um, do you think that uh, the lupin beta con glutens could also decrease inflammation in non-diabetic uh, people? Yes, it's, we have already demonstrated because uh, well, in, in, this is a very nice question because even if you are not diabetic, you sustain some inflammation every day with the stress. With so uh, in control cells uh, what, that we have already uh, that in not diabetic people, in vitro, in vitro acids have demonstrated that beta con gluten are able to decrease or include, even shut down all the pro-inflammatory molecules. So it's, it is demonstrated in vitro. In vivo, we are working in vivo right now with the um, animal model. And even if the, the, the committees, the ethic committees allow us to work with patients. So this is the next step in our investigation. Thank you. Thank you.
Okay. Uh, there's a question from the chat. Uh, this is fascinating. Thank you for sharing. Okay. Um, food is the key for fixing many things. Perhaps I missed. Um, hey, the, the question from the chat is, uh, uh, do you think that processing, heat treatment, uh, fractionation, etc., would impact the nutraceutical properties of? Sure. I, I think is the uh, sure impact in the in the property of a protein. So I think uh, the most important is to conserve the structure of the protein. We still don't know uh, if if we uh, consume the loopings in the intestinal barrier, the protein goes through in the whole form of just part of the part of the protein. This is that we are going uh, we are going through the investigation, but I think the 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 whole structure I think is very very important to conserve the structure for the for the this uh, nutraceutical property because we think that uh, the same thing the same form that the the protein interact with insulin they have to conserve the structure for the interaction and they have to conserve the structure for to activate uh, some other um, some other uh, molecular pathway in the cell beside the insulin signaling pathway to make to make this uh, nutritional uh, nutraceutical property. Okay. Another question from the chat. Um, do you happen to know if uh, beta conglutins or this kind of molecules are present in also in other legumes, post crop, post crop seeds? They are present in other. I mean, uh, I know already because we have seen the genome, the genome of uh, our, our transcript of um, other uh, loopings, for example, albus, uh, white looping, yellow looping, uh, pearl looping, the four species in the sweet looping group. So they have um, conglutin, but the conglutin are not the same. So I have to okay. say it's not the same. So they have different sequence. Especially, uh, even if the mobile arm is the most polymorphic uh, part of the protein, they also uh, have polymorphism in the in the globular in the in the globular domain. So we still don't know. I have already in the freezer, <laughs> in the freezer already the construct for uh, Lupinus albus, different beta conglutins from Lupinus albus and Lupinus luteus. That this is the next for my next pod uh, work. Uh, in this, uh, uh, if they have, they, pro they have to produce this, this protein and check if they have the same effect. We still don't know, but I think, um, I don't know, I don't, I don't know the answer because if the, if the mobile arm is the uh, important part of the protein, uh, we have demonstrated that they have uh, the effect in the nutraceutical property, maybe if the, in other, in other loopings, in other congruding, uh, from other species are polymorphic are, as well. Maybe uh, these proteins are going to work in the same way that beta conglutin in narrow looping are, are working. So, but we, we don't know. We don't know for now. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Uh, even another question. Even if uh, I guess that it's early to. Um, to see the practical application and what kind of uh, practical application, if it's going to be pushing forward toward a diet change, so people eating more lupin, or right. maybe some supplement that could be extracted, because obviously <laughs> that's also a matter of quantity. Yes. Because uh, if I need to eat every day five kilograms of lupin, uh, it's no, probably... No, no, no. Okay. I can, I can tell you that all these results are made from very small amount of uh, beta conglutin. It's about okay. it's about uh, nanogram or nanogram or mic microgram of protein. So, uh, in the seed, in one seed, except this quantity of uh, beta conglutin. That, okay. Uh, okay. The problem the problem is not that. The problem is we have to know if this protein are passing through the intestinal barrier, how they pass. Yes. But what we uh, want to apply this uh, research is know how the people have to 
have to eat or how many uh, lupin have to eat because if you are able to encapsulate this protein like insulin that like recombinant protein insulin uh, human insulin and you can give it to the people in the blood blood street uh, okay. and this protein goes to the target tissue so they can they can do the effect as a as a synthesis chemical but it's a natural thing it's a natural protein that is already in legumes so um, so our uh, our thinking goes to uh, goes through the way that we have to uh, vehiculize to uh, to protect this protein in some kind of vesicle some okay. kind of, of uh, with the with, with the with receptor for target cell and giving to the to giving directly to the people without passing the intestinal barrier this okay. is this is what we think okay very interesting very clear are there other, other questions okay so i guess that uh, that's it for today that's it for this year too uh, thank you again uh, jose carlo it was a uh, very interesting uh, Thank your you presentation much. is going uh, to be uploaded between today and tomorrow on our website and uh, on our youtube channel if you have any question you can all the contacts are there and you can write me or other people in the legume society right. thanks again uh, Thank you. for your contribution and uh, stop all right